What's happening, everybody? So we're on our third step of the brisket and pulled pork process. Uh, so we've already uh, rubbed the meat, got it ready for the smoker. We've smoked the meat for about 10 to 12 hours. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put it in the oven for another 8 to 10 hours just to get it to the perfect temperature where it's going to soften up. Uh, and then we can create our pulled pork and our brisket sandwiches. So what I do is I create a nice moist environment uh, for these the pork and the brisket to be in because it's going to go overnight. It's going to be 8 to 10 hours in the oven. We don't want it to dry out and we don't want the temperature to be too high. So what I do is I take a couple of roasting pans. You can do the same thing at home with a couple of 200 or, or uh, roasting, roasting racks and just put the brisket on top of there. I'm going to show you how I do it. I take some very large dice of Mirepoix. Mirepoix is <clears throat> carrots, onions, and celery. Classically, Mirepoix is two parts onions to one part celery or one part carrots. So I'm just going to throw these vegetables in here. This is going to add to the, uh, the body and the flavor. I'm just going to give a little, little flavor accent to the meat. So I've got all my veggies on there. And you want a large chop because this is going to help the meat stay above the pan. Instead of steaming, it's going to roast. I got my cooling racks in here. What I want to do, I'm just going to place my pork right on top of those cooling racks. Same thing with my brisket. Brisket right on top of the cooling racks. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some more moisture in here because it's going to go for the 8 to 10 hours. I want to make sure it has a very moist environment. And this is just apple juice, guys. Okay. About a quart of apple juice. As it cooks, the natural juices are going to come down into the roasting pan and keep it moist as well. But I'm just giving it a little added moisture barrier because we don't want any, we don't want any dry meat. No dry meat in this house. All right, just real quick, I'm going to show you how I wrap these up and at what temperature put them on. Okay, so all I do is put a little aluminum foot on top, crimp the edges on both sides. And then you're going to leave this area open right here for air to get through. So you're not steaming, you're roasting. The air is going to get underneath, underneath the cooling rack, it's going to get on top of the pork on the sides. So you're actually roasting, you're not steaming. Um, if, if the meat was connected to the bottom, what would happen is the bottom layer of, of meat would steam and the rest would roast. This, this way the whole, the whole piece of meat roasts. Okay? This air gets to all sides of the meat. We'll do the same thing for the brisket. And we're ready to go in the oven. Okay guys, so this is what I do for the pork. Since the pork has the bone in it and the skin on, it's going to take a little bit higher temperature than the brisket. So the pork's going to go at 225 for 8 to 10 hours, okay? Once that bone comes right out, okay, once it comes right out with not a lot of pressure, it's perfectly ready, okay? The brisket, the brisket's going to go in 200 degrees, 200 degrees for 8 to 10 hours until it's soft on the bottom. You can lift it up and touch the bottom and if it's nice and soft, it starts to peel away, it's perfect brisket, okay? So pork, 225, 8 to 10 hours, after we've already smoked it for 8 to 10 hours. And then uh, you're going to go 200 on the brisket, guys, okay? So once more, we're going to get full pork and brisket, doing some barbecue, guys. I hope you learned something today. Brian Williams, take care.